Taylor, your backstage beautician here, and we're going to attempt to tackle some hairstyles from Fiddler on the Roof. This is a very common production for community theaters or schools to choose to put on as it is not very challenging in the sets and costumes department. It also requires a very large cast, which makes it a popular choice again because you can cast pretty much everybody at it. Fiddler on the Roof is set in 1905 in the Russian shtetl of Anatevka. Fiddler on the Roof centers on Tevya, the father of five daughters, and his attempts to maintain his Jewish religious and cultural traditions. If outside influences encroach upon the family's lives, he must cope both with the strong-willed actions of his three older daughters who wish to marry for love, each one's choice of a husband moves further away from the customs of his faith, and with the edict of the Tsar that evicts Jews from their village. So as you can see, this is a period piece, so we're going to be dealing with period hairstyles. This musical also deals with religious and cultural themes. If you have seen any photos of Fiddler on the Roof, you'll be well used to seeing something like this. This is just a kerchief I had around my house. It's a square of fabric. And in most musicals, women wear um, kerchiefs on their head, typically folded in half at the corner, so it creates a triangle. And then the long flat side, or the hypotenuse, if you're mathematically inclined, lays flat on the head, like so. can be tied under the neck or under the hair behind the neck back here. You don't want to just tie this on your head and be basic. Every single other girl in the ensemble is going to be doing that. So we're going to try something a little more fancy. My hair is just washed and dried. I had it in a braid nose today. I've not put any product in or styled it at all. In the time period, they obviously did not have, oh, I'm going to sneeze. Most of your hair is going to be covered by this kerchief, so you want to make sure you're happy with how your bangs look. So, first what we do is we're going to separate the hair into two sections. You can put your fingers here, starting at your temples, and just run them back, like so, separating the hair into two sections. It's not super important how big either section is, we're just going to use this to give a little depth to our braiding. So taking this top section of hair, we're going to split it into three pieces and start braiding down. As we braid down, we're going to add in the bottom section of hair. playing with it. We can pull apart this braid to make it a little bit more messy, but only a certain amount of messy. We don't want it falling out on stage. If you also have long bangs that are growing out like me, you can pin those back. And remember what I said earlier, you want to make sure you're happy with how the front of your hair looks. That's what's going to be peeking out. Once you're happy with your braid, we're going to take our kerchief. Remember folding it in half, and taking the flat side, we're going to lay this on our head. I recommend laying it about two inches back from the hairline. I'm going to take the ends and tie them underneath your braid. Make sure you double knot it to keep it in place. And there you are, the first of our hairstyles. This is a super nice hairstyle if you're kind of new to doing your hair in musicals and you don't quite know what to do and you want to do something a little different. It's also really nice because it's interchangeable for act two. I'm a big fan of musical hairstyles that you can sort of pin up different parts and make it look different for the second act. All right, so now we're moving on to act two. So you run off stage during intermission, you've been working so hard, it's sweating, you probably end with singing tradition 30 million times and you rip this baby off. Then we're going to take a bunch more bobby pins. 
Also, if you want, I'm going to swap out this hair tie, this big thick one, because I have thick hair, for something that will hold a little better. We're going to pin this puppy up into a bun. All right, so what we're going to do to pin this into a bun is take the end and we're going to curl it up like a swirl, like a little spiral. So take the end and wrap it in and wrap it up again until it reaches your skull. Find the placement you want. It's going to be side braid on me because I braided my hair to the side. If you want it in the center, you can redo your braid back in the center. So having my hair up like this while still holding the center, I'm going to take my bobby pins and start inserting them into the bun. I like to put a few in the center and then work my way out to the sides to give the bun a base. So I'm going to go in and pin into that hair tie that we just put in. Buns can be a little tricky to form with no uh, bun form in the center. So make sure to really crisscross those bobby pins, spray them with hairspray before you put them in if you need to. If you need any specific help with, with bobby pins, just let me know and I can pass along some tips and tricks in the bottom. So now that I've pinned the center, I'm moving on to the outer portions. Oop, lost my bangs there. This is why you hairspray. So just keep adding bobby pins until you're happy with the way it looks. And once you feel like it's secure, always take your hairspray and zhuzh her up. Make sure to really get the back too. People make the mistake of just hairspraying from the top down. Yeah, that helps with like flyaways, but this bun is secured to the little baby hairs in the back of your neck. So make sure to get those babies too. Another tip when you're doing a braided bun like this, especially for layers like me, is these little puppies want to escape. So plan ahead for those. Pull them out even if you have to. Just know where they're going to come from and make sure they're really secure too. Because you don't want to be midway through sunrise, sunset. And you can feel your braid escaping down your back. You know what I mean? So for putting the kerchief on this one, same rule applies. I go for about two inches behind the hairline. And you're going to want to tie this one so that you don't lose the bun. So make sure to kind of tie it around the bun. This is why those of you who want to do a middle braid, a bun instead of a side bun might have an easier time. Make sure to do a double knot so it stays. And then if you have this, where it's covering my bun, I don't want that. So in order to get around that, I'm going to take a bobby pin and actually pin my kerchief up out of the way. And there you have it. This is my act two hairstyle. Remember what I said about these pieces escaping? Dang layers. Dang layers. You got a lot of layers. You could always use some hair gel. All right, guys, that's all I have for our hairstyles today. Thank you so much for watching. And until next time, break a leg on your production of Fiddler on the Roof.